Hello, I'm Evan. This is my 2018 M3 competition. And when I had a 300ZX twin turbo, I made a video, five facts that most 300ZX owners don't know. It was very popular. I go to town learning about any car I own. And when I realized that finally I found five really good facts, I decided now's the time to make the video. So I hope that you enjoy this and uh, let's get it started. I'm just gonna give you some quick facts that we should know as F80 owners. We should know it was the first twin turbo, first turbocharged version M3. We're also not gonna cover that this is the first time they split up the M3 and M4, right? That's a given. If you don't know that, then you don't honestly know these cars very well. So the fifth fact is that the F80 and F82 is lighter than its previous generation M3, the E90 and E92. Um, it went, depending on whether it's DCT or manual, it went from 140 to about 176 pounds lighter. When you compare similar cars, generation from generation, and what makes the weight saving so interesting is how they did it. Both cars have weight savings in them, but you know, I'm more familiar with the F80 and F82. There is uh, a lot of carbon fiber. You obviously have your carbon fiber roof. You obviously have other carbon components. For example, the trunk skeleton is carbon fiber. There's a lot of lightweight comp components in it too, including the doors are extremely light. But beyond that, one of the more interesting ones that I want to point out is the use of a lithium battery. So the lithium battery saves 30 pounds over a traditional battery. I find it very interesting how BMW spared no expense to save weight in this car. And yeah, they're passing it to the consumer. So if you own one of these, the battery costs to replace it about $1,500 or more. And the other thing about the battery though is it does it does last longer than a conventional battery. Typically four to 10 years is the lifespan. So for the fourth fact, this one I guess more people can relate to, and that is, is that BMW offered in the F80 and F82 generation more individual color options than ever before. There was, I believe 22 offered in the E90 and E92, and in this generation, they went to what I counted as 79. Really, really cool how many different colors this car comes in. Third fact, if you're a heavy spec guy, you should know this, but if you're, but you might not know the full details. And that is, is that this is the first M3 out of the factory to break 12 seconds on the quarter mile. BMW prior generations, the, the E30, the E36, the E90, they were all fantastic handling cars. Essentially the E90, E92 had the V8, but it still did not crack the 12 second quarter mile mark straight from the factory. And uh, this generation did it in spades. Uh, when journalists tested it every single time, 12.7 is, you know, ballpark of what you'll see on paper. Number four, while minute, it's still interesting. I love how the M3 looks. I like how the M4 looks a lot. Sometimes I like it over the M3 in certain angles, but generally speaking, the M3, just the details fit so well. So in my opinion, you get the better looking of the two, and actually, and here's the fact, the more aerodynamic. The reasons for having a more aerodynamic version is number one, you have a shorter roof rack, and number two, the trunk lid is not integrated with the spoiler. So that actually helps the aerodynamics, and it, it's very minute. Okay, so the top reason. This generation M3 has an extremely high torsional rigidity. And so what that means is that we have a very, very stiff chassis. It measures at 40,000 Newton meters degree. Give you an idea of what this metric means and just to give you a sense of cars comparing it. Um, oh, and one thing before I do that. So it means how, um, how much pressure it takes to bend the frame of the car one degree. Okay, 
So now that you have a, a solid understanding of what it is, let me give you some numbers. The Ferrari 458 is actually at 33,000. Uh, a BMW comparison is, and I'm not the only person, I actually got this from an engineer from BMW who talked about it. It's more rigid than the E30 Evo, which was a full on track car, and we know how much it kicked butt back in the day. It had, it had a measure of 23,000. So, uh, and that had a roll cage in it too, and was obviously designed specifically for racing. So it should really give you a lot of confidence driving this car, that you have an extremely capable chassis, and I know I do. I've driven quite a few cars. The handling characteristics is what sold me on this car, uh, not to mention the power, but, but really the handling characteristics are one of a kind to me. Um, now I'm sure there are better cars that handle better, but you know I haven't driven everything. So uh, I just found that extremely impressive, and uh, that is the best fact. So. I hope you really enjoyed this video, I hope you learned something, and put in the comments if you have any other facts that you know about this car. I may make more videos like these down the line. If you have other cars you want to learn about, put it in the comments section, I might see if uh, there's enough good details about it and if I know someone who has one, um, and you know, more to come. So thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed.